Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, again to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to present thy word today. Help us, O oh Lord, that all of us will be found a ground, grounded in the faith that once you gave it to the saints. And help us all to be part of this last generation that will be representing you in the time of judgment. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I wanted to go back to this issue that you were talking about. You mean on the last program that yeah. we talk about? When we're talking about this issue of judgment. But I want to bring okay. out one point that's going to be more important. And that is, we talked about blotting out of sin. Mm. And we talked about the animal sacrificial system that was in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. How does the animal sacrificial system of the Old Testament relate to Christ's who is a high priest in the New Testament, and how is it that God's people will have their sins not only forgiven, but blotted out? And, it's, and if sin's going to be blotted out, where is it going to be blotted out? Because mm -hmm. the Bible also tells that affliction shall not rise or sin shall not rise a second time. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we, I want to talk about that for just a few moments so we can Amen. look at it. And I want you to look here with me for a moment at, first of all, does God talk about blotting out sin? I want to mm -hmm. find that first of all. Do we have any Bible text or any scriptures in the, in the scriptures that deal with this issue? Go to me to Isaiah chapter 40, 44, 25. I'm sorry, for Isaiah 44, 25 says, I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. Now, here we have God telling us that the time was coming when he will blot out his sin, our sins for his own sake. Now, Isaiah, what was Isaiah, it? That was Isaiah 44, Isaiah 25. 44, 25. Uh-huh. That it's, wasn't 25. No, Isaiah, Isaiah 43, I'm sorry, Isaiah okay. 43, 25. Okay. I Isaiah know. 43, 25. Sorry okay. All okay. right. So what does God said he's going to do? He's going to blot out our sins for his what? For his own sake and not, it says, and will not remember thy sins. So when we talk about going to heaven, Jesus is telling us that the time is coming. The Word of God tells us time is coming. When we go to heaven, God is not going to be there looking at you, remembering your sins. Now, that's very important because people wonder, I don't know if I can enjoy heaven because God might be looking at me and he might remember something I did in 1970 or 1932 or, 19, or 1800, whoever's there, okay? But that will not happen. Why? Because God made a promise that he's going to put his law in your mind. This is the new covenant. Amen. What does the new covenant say? I will, it says, and this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. Wow. I'll put my laws in their what? Minds mm -hmm. and write them in their hearts and I will be to God and they should be a people. And listen carefully. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest and I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully. And their iniquities. This is going back to what Isaiah just said. Well, I remember no more. Mm -hmm. So God's going to blot sin Blot your sins, my our sins, my sins out of the book of life while keeping your name in the book because you confess and forsook your sins. Amen. And Christ's righteousness has been what has covered us for that through his blood. So that, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. So there is a condition, though, for our yes, sins to be brought in. That's out. right, right. We must confess, confess and forsake them. And forsake them. That's right. Proverbs, uh, uh, that's and good. we must hear the law because some people say you don't need the law. Excuse, excuse me. In Proverbs 28, 9, the Bible says, He that turned away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Wow. So the Bible said your prayer becomes an abomination. Well, well, I can pray and still be in sin. Psalm 66, 18 says what? If I regard iniquity, iniquity in my heart, heart, the Lord will not, not hear, hear my prayer. Mm. So there is a very serious situation here that your sins have to be confessed and forsaken and blotted out by the power of God and by the power of and by Jesus' blood. Just, just to give a promise on the reverse side in, in 1 John 
5, verse 14, John says that if we pray in, according to God's will, we know that He hears us and that we will gain our request. 1 John 5, what, what verse? Verse 14. Okay, can you read it, please? Okay, let's read that one. 514. It's, it says, just to, it says, uh, and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And, and what is God's will in relationship on blotting out our sins? <laughs> yea, Thy law is within my heart. Um, I delight to do Thy will. Mm -hmm. Yea, Thy law is within my heart. God's will is His law. Right. And verse 15 says, and, it, and if we know that He hears us, whatsoever, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. Now, re and remember this issue of blotting out is very important. Look at Deuteronomy with me for a moment. And look at Deuteronomy 9, 14. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 14. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make thee a nation mightier and greater than they. God was going to blot out the whole nation of Israel and only use Moses to, to remake a new nation. Wow. And wow. Moses interceded. And what did Moses say in Exodus 32, 32, and 33? It says, Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book. Now, wait a minute. Out of thy what? Out of thy book. Out of thy book. So mm -hmm. our names are in a book. Mm -hmm. Moses' name was in a book. Okay, go ahead, keep going. And he said, take my name out then. That's right. If you're going to blot it out. And then 33 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now, sinned against him here refers to sins that have not been confessed or forsaken right. and have not the blood of the animals atoning for it mm -hmm. in the earthly sanctuary service that was in the days of Moses. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Now, so, mm -hmm. for this end time, yes. uh, there is a promise, though, for those who obey God's commandment. Mm -hmm. Revelation, Revelation 22, can we read it? We, we can come back right 14. back. Yeah, fortune, please. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and, and enter in through the gates of the city. Amen. So the name will remain in the book of life when we will uh, be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. Let's go yeah. to Psalms 51. Psalm 51. 51. Psalms 51, okay. and let's look at verse 1. David prayed a prayer, and then also verse 9. You can read verse 9, and, he, and Patrick can read verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wow. So now what's going to happen with the 104,000 and all who will be in heaven? Mm. Their sins will be blotted their out. Their sins will not only be forgiven, but their sins will be blotted out. How thoroughly will the sins be blotted out so far? God just said... He will not remember your sins anymore. Mm. But the question is going to be answered wow. in a few moments. Will that be enough? Mm. Will it be enough for God only not to remember our sins anymore? Mm. Let's go back one. But let's go to Psalm 51, 9. What does David say? Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me, verse 10, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now notice what David said. What did he say? Blot out all my what? Iniquities. So iniquity cannot remain in your next next to your name in the book of life. Mm -hmm. It must be confessed and forsaken. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go one more step. Go to Jeremiah. Let's make a contrast. Look at Jeremiah 18, 23. Let's see what happens to the wicked in Jeremiah 18, 23. Okay, Patrick, read that for us. It says, Yea, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity. What? He, what did he say? What is he, he praying said, now? He said, forgive not forgive their iniquity. Forgive not their iniquity. Look at it. Go ahead. Neither blot out their sin oh. from thy sight. So wait a minute. Forgiveness and blotted out are two different things. Mm. They're, but they're connected. Forgiveness, for, what did he say? Forgive not their iniquity. And it says, and neither blot out their sin, sin from, thy from, sight. Their, from thy sight. So we have to understand that we have to give forgiveness of sins, mm -hmm. and everybody knows that one, but mm -hmm. only a few of us realize, only a few Christians realize that the sins that were forgiven have to be blotted out. Amen. If we want to be part of the, of the if uh, we're going to be our name written in, in the, the book, book of, of life. life. And if we're going to be in the kingdom of God. Think, that's that's right. right. Look what it goes on in Revelation 3, 5. The Bible says, he did overcome up the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Now, this is talking about victory over sin now. Amen. Because we, gotta have, we can't practice iniquity, 
and we got to put away sin. Is that right? So our sins can be what? Forgiven and what? Blotted out. Blotted out. So watch this. He did overcome up. The same shall be clothed in white raiment. This is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I will not blot his mm -hmm. name, his name out of the what? Book, Book of, of life. life, but I will confess his name before my Father in heaven and before the angels. Wait a minute. Whose names are Jesus going to confess before his, the angels and his Father in heaven? Those that overcome. Those who overcome and are clothed with white raiment who have experienced two things. What? Their sins being forgiven, but ultimately their sins being blotted out of the Book of Life. So it's either our sins blotted out or our name blotted out. Or our name blotted out, right. Well, now, now the question is, is now, now that we understand that, the question is, is that enough though? But our names being blotted out of the book and God not remembering our sins anymore, will that be enough for us to go into the kingdom and to be rejoicing and be in the presence of God? God wants to destroy sin. Yeah, yes, right. he wants to destroy sin. But is that enough for us? The question, the answer is no. Because even though you have your name, even though God said he won't remember your sins anymore and your names are no longer found, your sins are no longer in the book, there's one problem. You must come to, it must be a point where God's people do not remember their sin. Hmm. Because I can say, Perez, I've forgiven you. And, I, and you see all the evidence that I've done it. And then I can say, look, Perez, your name is not even, your, your sins are blood out the book. And you say, yes. But, you have, but there's only one problem here. I said, why are you look? Why, what's wrong, Perez? Why are you, why are you still looking at me with, with such disdain or, or with some doubt? Because the sin is still where? In the mind. In your mind. And what does God say over in Jeremiah chapter 17? Oh, yeah. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. Why is that so important for us? Mm. In Jeremiah chapter 17, look what the word of God says in verse 1. The mm. sin of Judah. The who? Judah. The sin of Judah. Judah. Is as a what? Read it, Patrick. Is yeah. written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Where is our sins written? In the table of our heart with a diamond. How, a how are they there? They engraved. That means a deep groove. It's a pathway mm. in the heart. Right. I mean, what can we do? The people... What, this dilemma has to be settled. We have to be able to answer this. Mm. Because the scriptures are telling us that God will forgive us and everything else, but we got a problem. Mm. I think that this is such a, an important point. I want you to pick up right there into that point right after this. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, my brother. Yeah, we were dealing with the issue that now that our sins will be what? Blotted blood. out. And we now I want to see something because I told you it's not enough that our sins are just blot out the book. It's got to be all and blotted out of God's mind. It has to be blotted out of our mind. Yeah, you said that it was not even enough to be blotted out of, of God's mind. Right, God's mind. God yeah. won't remember it. Yeah. But you, as long as you remember it, there's going to be a problem. Uh -huh. So God already prepared for this issue. Okay. Listen carefully. In Jeremiah 17, 1, the Bible says, The sin of Judah is written with a, a pen of an iron mm -hmm. and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the tables of their heart mm -hmm. and upon the horns of their altars. Mm -hmm. Where is the sins put at? Where are they at, Pat? Engraven on their heart. Engraven. That means the grooves are being made where? In the human mind. In the mind, right. In the mind, there are pathways that, mm -hmm. that actually are, are made because of continual transgression or continual habits Syn practices. Sin synapses. Synapses, right. that's right. And so, but now, 
what is, did God make a promise he's going to do something? Because we, got, we really got to have this together. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible says over in Jeremiah 50 now. Mm -hmm. Let's see, in Jeremiah 50, the Bible tells us something about, uh, about the sins of God's people. In Jeremiah 50, what was that 50? Verse 20. In verse 20, it says, And in those days, and at that time, said the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. The iniquity of Israel is going to be what? Sought for. Now, who's going to be looking for the iniquity? Not God. He already got the record. He already, and he, you he and I, out all you and I, life. you and I are going to be looking for our iniquity. Or, or every Christian that's trying to purify their souls and be right with God, mm -hmm. the time is coming when we need to be doing, working our salvation with fear and trembling now because the time is coming when our iniquity will be sought for. Listen carefully. It says here, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, remember the sins of Judah was written like an iron pen earlier? Right, right, right. The sins of Judah, for I will what? I will pardon them whom I reserve. But God's pardon is not only forgiveness, but blotting out of what? Sin. Sins. And where is God going to blot the sins out? Of our mind. Now, is that true? Let's see something. Go to Hebrews with me. Let's go to Hebrews right quick. Okay. Let's be one more step because I want to know why they're without fault before the throne. What makes his people so special? Not only them, but everybody that's going to be in the kingdom for that matter. We could, because they're going, to have, they're going to experience this new covenant. Mm. Where God's going to blot sin out of how many places so far? His mind, out of the books of record, and out of your mind, my mind. That is going to be the most important. That You talk about happy. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about relief. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait. Mm. All right? Are you okay? All right? All right. All right. Look at what the Bible says. Amen. Can you read that for me? Hebrews what? Hebrews 10, 1. Hebrews for us. 10, read that 1. for us. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Okay, now notice. Now connect that with me to Hebrews 11 for a moment. Go to Hebrews 11, 38 through 39. I want to show you something that you wrote. You said, right. of, it says, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in the mountains and in the dens and the caves of earth. All right, Patrick, verse 39 and 40. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better things for us, that without us, th that they without us should not be made perfect. Now, what do you mean perfect? Now, most people say you can't be, you can't live perfect life. You can't be a perfect Christian. Perfect perfection of character, perfection is dealing with character. Mm -hmm. And the character is becoming mean that we reflect the image of Christ and we bear the fruits of the Spirit. But here it says, they without us should not be made perfect. The word perfect means complete. They cannot be made complete until we're complete. The day, the confession of the sins in the early Old Testament history was an individual matter where people brought their animal sacrifices. But the blotting out of sin was a collective act mm -hmm. that everybody would get their sins blotted out at the same time. Mm -hmm. So here we have the, the people in Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Enoch, David, and all of them, they got forgiveness of their sins through faith, through the animal sacrificial system. But they also could, but those animal sacrifices could not do something. It cannot blot their sins out. But they had to place the faith on the Messiah to the, come. Right. The animal sacrifice the animal. pointed to the lamb without blemish, without spot, uh -huh. pointed to Christ, who uh -huh. was the Messiah to come. Uh -huh. And therefore, the blood was applied through faith that one day the real, the real sacrifice will come uh -huh. and they would get atoning that his blood will make atonement for them as well. Uh, Peter, he, uh, Jesus was crucified on Passover day. Then Peter received the latter or the early rain on the Pentecost. Mm -hmm. The next feast day would be the day of atonement. And yes. that's why Peter preached then, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. He thought he was going to go uh, that the day of atonement that would happen in yes. his day. Mm -hmm. But he died, but still he has to go through the anti-type Day of Atonement, where his name will come out, and and what his will sins be will... And what will be seen next to Peter's name that he sent all his sins beforehand to judgment, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we talked about that earlier. Look at here in Hebrews ten two. Now we notice it says it says here for the law having a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of things, could never with those sacrifices which were offered how offered by year by year. Year by year is talking about the Day of Atonement mm -hmm. that was in the Old Testament sanctuary service, the earthly oh, service. Oh, I see, yeah. It says here. Year by year, it says, continually make the comers down to what? Perfect or complete. 
For then would they not cease to be offered. Now listen carefully. Because the worshipers once purged should have no more what? Now what would, what would, this, what would happen if the Day of Atonement in the early Israelite, if the animal sacrifices and their blood was enough? What would happen to them at the end of the year? They would have no more conscience of sin. They wouldn't remember their sins. They would not remember their sins anymore. So wait a minute. We have an issue here where God is not going to just blot sin out the book. He's not going to just blot sin out of, the, out, of, out, of, out of your mind, out of his mind, but he's got to remove sin eventually from whose mind? Our mind. Oh. Our mind. So listen to this. It goes on and says, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Right. Every year is done with Day of Atonement still. For why? Why, did, why was it a remembrance of sin? Because it was not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away. Now, the what? Take away, remove sin and remove the guilt that sin brings. They got forgiveness and they believed they were forgiven through faith, but it was not possible for bloods of bulls and goats to do it. Mm -hmm. So therefore it was offered in faith with the hope that a better blood would come one day, a better sacrifice and a better sanctuary. Not the blood of bulls and goats, but the blood of a savior, a mm -hmm. wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of Amen. peace. Listen, it says here now, what, wait a minute, for it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could do what? Take away sins, but one day, one day, a, a prophet, a self-supporting preacher saw another preacher coming. And what did he say in John 1, 29? Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the that world. That does what? Taketh away, not the lamb animal sacrifices, but here is the real lamb that will not only bring forgiveness, but will take away, he will blot out their sins. Now, can you repeat again from who, who and from where that voice came? That voice came from John the Baptist. Word, in from the word. From the from, wilderness. And the wilderness. Wilderness. He was, not a, he, was not pop, he was not part of a one world church. He was not part of a, he was not even popular in among his own people. That's he right. was out in the desert. He had been raised by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was on him from a child and told him his father, said his name should be called John when the father didn't want to believe it. The angel told him his name should be called John and he shall be great. And he showed, and, and, and he showed, and he was the one, he was the forerunner for the Messiah. Right. And so Christ, who was the Messiah, if we, you know, it's a funny thing. They believe in John the Baptist being the forerunner, but they don't want to believe that Jesus was the Messiah who John pointed to. Isn't that ironic? It is. And today we have those who give the three angels messages as a forerunner for Christ's second advent, just as John was the forerunner for Christ's first, first advent. advent. Yes, Amen. and many do not want to believe that the three angels' messages that are calling you back to the law of God and calling you to be partakers of Christ's righteousness, because without the righteousness of Christ, you cannot keep the commandments anyway. And, and, and the same way that preaching Jesus as being the Messiah brought so much hatred yes. against towards John the Baptist and his preaching, the same way, history repeats. Yes. It, it's, it's the enemy that bring, put that in the mind of the majority of the people, brings so much hatred and misunderstanding on the mind, on the mind of, the, of the majority against those that by God's grace are bringing these messages out. Now, let's history see. repeats. Now, so we find out that sins will be blotted out. So the blotting out of sin in the Day of Atonement was called the cleansing of the, the sanctuary. sanctuary. Now, let's go back now to Daniel 8, 40, 14. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then and shall the sanctuary, sanctuary be cleansed, or that the sins of God's people will be what? Forgiven, pardoned, and what? Blotted Blood out by the blood of a better sacrifice and a better high priest who begins his final work in 1844, Jesus started in 8031. In 1844, he begins his final work to forgive, pardon, and finally blot out sin and keep your name in the book of life. And that's why the Bible said, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And thy, and, and it says, and, and thy people shall be delivered. Everyone found written in the book. Christ began that work anti-typical yes. work of the Day of Atonement, cleansing the sanctuary in 1844, because that was the day when the 2300 years came to an end. Yes. From 457 BC, the 70 weeks were cut off for God's people, which ended in 34 AD. 1810 more years went to 1844, and the Day of Atonement happened in that year on the 10th day of the seventh Jewish month, 
which we call October 22, 1844. And they use the Jewish Karite calendar to find an answer mm -hmm. to that right. issue. But now, what I want to also, what we're looking at, so you can get, so, you, so we can go look a little closer at this. If that's the case, then where are we today? And these end time events when the harvest is drawing so near, probations are upon the whole world is about to close. We're in the final hours of the judgment. Wow. So fear God and give what? Give glory, glory to Him, him. for the hour, hour of, of His judgment, judgment is come. And, Amen. And, and you know, I know we haven't taken time to describe or go a little deeper on this program about when it says, and the sanctuary must be purified. We usually say that is a sanctuary in heaven. But really, in this earth, the sanctuary was a symbol also of who? Our body. Our body. Our body. Our body's been Paul well. says that we are the temple of the Holy, Go Holy right. Spirit. We're supposed, to be Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be cooperating so, with God. That's right. And, and the sanctuary that God wants to purify today is our life. Amen. The, 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 that's why you were that's right. saying our sins must be blown out because that's, that was taking place during the time of the judgment. And yes. so, so the three angels' message want to, wants to cleanse us from our individual sins, first angel's message, from corporate sins, second angel's Amen. message, and stand clothed in Christ's righteousness by faith in the third angel's message. Amen. Yes. So the work that is taking place in heaven, it is a, uh, all the work of that once is a reflection of what God wants to see in each one of our life. Seeing our life through the process of the judgment being Blot out. Now, I like the idea that there will be a time when we so will sin, not even think about right. So sin is blotted out the books, sin is blotted out of God's mind, and our sin will be blotted out of our mind. And that's the time when God's people go through the great time of trouble with anguish, trying to remember their sins and cannot, because Amen. their sins have gone behind the four times of judgment, and they have been blotted out and sent to the land of forgetfulness. Now, let me ask you this to close. Isn't that a good news? So if it is a good news, why not? going through the Bible, follow this study, look at, prayfully about the judgment time that we are living, according to Revelation 14, 6 and 7, and let's seek the Lord as never before so we can become part of this end time harvest that Jesus is preparing into his kingdom. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.